Look, David, I'm sorry. A monster took my film review. What was I supposed to do about it? Now, you're the guy in charge here, right? Will you help me find it? What do you know about this creature, anyway? Muto. A massive, unidentified terrestrial organism. It is, however, no longer terrestrial. It is airborne. Now, the world still thinks this was an earthquake, and it would be preferable that that remain so. Well, that doesn't sound too good. Can we review films tonight or not? We will get on our game, and we will find this thing. Oh, well, that's great news. That means we can produce the show after all. It is imperative that we do so. Yes, it is. And this is Movie Night. Hello and welcome to Movie Night, home to in-depth film reviews in five minutes or less. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. Tonight we'll take a look at three new theatrical releases, beginning with Neighbors. This decidedly R-rated comedy from director Nicholas Stoller was produced on an $18 million budget and is well on its way to earning back ten times that amount at the box office. Perpetual stoner Seth Rogen stars as a young family man, struggling to raise a newborn baby with his sexy Australian wife, Rose Byrne, after a rowdy fraternity moves into the house next door. All grown up from his high school musical days, the ridiculously toned Zac Efron is featured opposite as the vengeful leader of the frat, hellbent on making the wholesome family's life a living hell after they're forced to file a noise complaint against him and his rambunctious college friends. Rogan is, well, Rogan, as charming and funny as ever, but still extremely limited and predictable in the acting category, showing us the exact same beats and dramatic turns we've seen from him dozens of times before. Efron plays a more nuanced role, and the 97-minute plot eventually hints that there's more to his motivation than endless partying. Sadly, this thread is left without a really strong resolution. Byrne, however, is easily the strongest member of this picture, really showcasing a depth and perseverance to her character that anchors the nonsense on screen. She later defends her decisions by saying, just because I'm a mom doesn't mean I know what's best. Although the movie is actually funnier during the quieter moments, it's the Blitzkrieg-like editing during the party sequences where it really shines. Frantically cutting between dozens of interestingly shot angles, all beautifully lit with neon colors and black lights, these montages are perhaps the most visually interesting and hypnotic parties ever produced on film. When it comes time for actual substance, though, the well-paced experience thankfully does a good job establishing the characters and the importance of their goals. It's just unfortunate everything is a bit familiar. With one exception, though. I can't recall ever seeing a couple of dudes sword fight with foot-long dildos before, so the movie's got that going for it. Fans of gross-out humor and sophomoric jokes, or just Seth Rogen, will be right at home with this picture, a capable and hilarious modern-day college comedy. I think the frat broke into my car and stole the airbags. Airbags? Yeah. That's so weird. Is, is, is there anything else missing? No. Okay, uh... Why would they just break in and steal the airbags? I don't know. We should follow police... <laughs> Oh, Delta Psi has the upper hand! Oh! 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 On the airbags! Oh! There's three left! Two left! Oh. An immoral and forgettable experience saved by its talented and attractive cast, this is an enjoyable, if somewhat pointless and unrealistic experience I probably won't need to watch again for a few years. Neighbors, fleeting tomfoolery with raunchy laughs. Here's what you had to say in the YouTube comments. Our scores for Neighbors, two sevens. Recognizing its flaws and familiarity, you still enjoyed the adult humor enough to score this a cool. Believable characters in some less than believable situations made this an entertaining picture, but I can't help but wonder, is the PG-13 rated comedy dead? Sure, watching a toddler mistakenly eat a condom is funny, but is grossing out audiences the only way to score laughs these days? I certainly hope not. Anyway, I thought this movie was cool too. For tonight's poll question, what's your favorite comedy of the last 10 years? Leave your response as a comment below. Switch gears completely now, let's check out a different genre with Godzilla. This $160 million science fiction monster movie was released on May 16, 2014, almost 60 years after the titular beast made his first appearance in Japanese cinema. The fifth American installment of the iconic franchise, and the 33rd picture overall, scored a very strong $93 million opening weekend. Thankfully, though, it's also substantially better than the lackluster 1998 version with Matthew Broderick. 
Having grown up with the films as a kid, director Gareth Edwards takes special care to portray the 350-foot-tall monster as authentically and faithfully to its source material as possible. Stylized as redacted government documents, the opening credits show flashbacks of atomic testing in the 1950s, which we learn later was actually humanity's attempt to subdue the giant creature. The 123-minute film then presents the familiar tale of mankind versus the monsters that they foolishly awaken with their scientific curiosity. One of those scientists is the incredibly talented Brian Cranston, who drives the film's emotional prologue with a brilliant performance. It's a familiar setup for these types of stories, but the three-time Emmy winner makes it work. Sadly, however, we don't see much of him after that, and the PG-13 rated picture definitely suffers as a result. Are we at full function? Yes, we are. But perhaps we should be drawing down to be safe. You take us offline. Now, Joe, we gotta talk Do it about now. It. Wind it down. Can't you know? Me piece of runda. Sandra. In his first substantial starring role, Aaron Taylor Johnson isn't particularly convincing as a bomb disposal expert in the U.S. Navy, nor is he charismatic as the traveling husband of the extremely underused Elizabeth Olsen, who plays his gorgeous wife. To be fair, though, Taylor Johnson isn't really given much to do either. His character only serves as an eyepiece for the audience to view the devastation around him. In fact, this metaphor is solidified when we literally watch Godzilla destroy San Francisco through Aaron's foggy goggles during a high-altitude skydiving jump. Ken Watanabe, Sally Hawkins, and David Strathairn all have pivotal roles as well, but are only utilized to deliver lots of exposition, including this poignant warning from Watanabe, the arrogance of man is thinking nature is in their control, and not the other way around. With such mammoth possibilities, this picture had the opportunity to put Roland Emmerich's destruction-laden movies to shame, but every dark and spatially confusing sequence makes it difficult to tell what's happening, and the nighttime lighting obscures all of the coolest action. In particular, a scene involving a precarious train crossing on a towering mountain bridge had the potential to be terrifying and suspenseful, but since the geographic relationship between the humans and the monster was kind of unclear, there wasn't much tension here. Given the absurd circumstances of this universe, the execution of giant monsters rising from the sea to battle each other is handled with a fair amount of realism, even if pulling a 9mm pistol on a building-sized dinosaur is the most laughable decision I've ever seen a character do. The exquisitely handled visual effects make it all look remarkably realistic as well, with the ferocious title character taking center stage. Meanwhile, Alexander Desplat contributes a looming and ominous score throughout the high-stakes action. Special mention goes to the cinematography, which despite being dark and cloudy when you'd simply prefer to see what is happening, is otherwise incredibly incredibly beautiful and artistic, especially the aforementioned halo jump, backlit by the glowing amber of a ruined city. The loud sound effects that brings the creatures to life is also rather impressive. Their long and sustained roars are unnerving and frightening. Contrary to Godzilla's underwater home, though, this movie unfortunately lacks any depth. But if you want to see the King of the Monsters absolutely wreak havoc, you could certainly do worse than this enjoyable and rewatchable experience. Godzilla, characters forgotten amid monster mayhem. Now let's check out some of your opinions on this movie. Lots of votes and reviews for this one, but your scores to average to an 8, whereas I'll give it a 7. Most criticize the empty story, but love the effects and battles. You thought it was great. As far as monster movies go, this one is a real treat and a proper return to form for the decades-old franchise. But as far as compelling cinema goes, this picture lacks quite a bit. I thought it was cool. But perhaps you'd be interested to hear what I thought about this movie months before I saw it? Head over to the Movie Night Archive channel to watch my trailer commentaries, including one I posted in March for Godzilla, as well as a full library of all the reviews we've done on the show. Finally tonight, let's review the brand new X-Men Days of Future Past. This epic superhero adventure film is the seventh installment in the multi-billion dollar X-Men film series and is poised to earn back half of its $200 million budget during its 2014 Memorial Day weekend debut. The extremely ambitious 131-minute film acts as a dual sequel to both X-Men The Last Stand and X-Men First Class. Starring in his sixth X-Men film, Hugh Jackman leads the absolutely gigantic cast of unique mutants determined to survive a deadly war in the dystopian future of 2023 by traveling back in time 50 years to stop a threat before it emerges. Let's go!
Returning director Brian Singer expertly balances the parallel Inception-style narratives, and rather than being weighed down with this extra story device, the picture is instead far more engaging. Jackman is as charismatic, handsome, and able as ever, effortlessly bouncing off both groups of players. James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, and Nicholas Holt make up the past group, while Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, Halle Berry, and Ellen Page are featured sparingly as the future characters. Considering the size and scope of this project, it would have been easy for any number of them to have been forgotten and underutilized. And with the notable exception of Barry, whose role had to be downsized during her recent pregnancy, each individual is given ample time to showcase their powers and impressive acting talent. Meanwhile, Peter Dinklage, Evan Peters, Mark Camacho, and even some terrific cameos also make important appearances. As what could best be described as the film's conventional human antagonist, Dinklage defends his anti-mutant crusade by saying, Never before had there been a cause that could unite us as a species until now. As a huge fan of superhero films and time travel stories, I was floored by this PG-13 rated picture from the very start, which introduces us to a hellish and unforgiving future worth erasing from history. In a fantasy land where literally anything is possible, the X-Men films haven't always been able to elicit the sense of danger and urgency needed for tense and exciting action. Fortunately, that's never an issue here, with each extraordinary sequence building upon the last, towards an unstoppable consequence that looms over the entire narrative. An early prison break sequence deep beneath the Pentagon is particularly inventive and entertaining, especially when Peters hilariously listens to Jim Croce's Time in a Bottle while dispatching an incoming security force at lightning quick speed. John Ottman delivers a wonderfully bombastic musical score that besides including motifs of previous soundtracks, also helps sell the grandiose and unbelievable action on screen. Surprisingly well-paced and coherent for a picture that features this many moving parts, there's also plenty of great jokes and callbacks as well, which should delight all comic book fans. As expected, the visual effects are flawless, combined with excellent and detailed camera work make this a beautiful film to look at, and easy to follow during the hectic action sequences. Focusing on the central ideal that no matter how dark your path, it's never too late to find yourself again, this is a hopeful and dare I say inspiring story that's more than just magical mutants fighting robot soldiers. Although the X-Men canon has ostensibly been retconned by itself, the feature ends with a rewarding climax that thankfully leaves the door open for future, or should I say past, installments. It's an extremely imaginative and exciting movie that perfectly blends elements of multiple interesting genres into one extremely rewatchable experience. X-Men Days of Future Past. Compelling interplay underlines marvelous action. Another opening day review means there weren't enough of your votes or comments, but I'll score this a 9 out of 10. These types of ensemble pictures are never a surefire formula, but everything worked like gangbusters here, truly combining the best parts of the earlier pictures into one incredible experience. I thought it was very awesome. Now let's see what you're saying about movies currently playing in theaters with some of your tweet critiques. If you see a new movie in theaters, tweet your review at the JPMN hashtag. Next week we'll be reviewing three western comedies, including the granddaddy of them all, Blazing Saddles. The poorly received Wild Wild West from 1999, and Seth MacFarlane's newest effort, A Million Ways to Die in the West. Once you've seen these films, share your opinions by voting in the polls below, or by leaving a comment review. If you'd like to watch more Movie Night Reviews, check out the related videos on the right, or click subscribe to be notified of all new content. Also be sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, or Instagram for updates between episodes. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula, thank you for watching and listening. Until next time, have a good movie night.